We have Inika Curvy Lash Mascara and Erin's Faces Matcha Mascara. These are two of my favorites that have been featured in the Brits Picks Guide, and now I am battling them against one another. So which one's best? Stick around to find out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brit, creator of The Style Shaker, and today I am back testing two mascaras against each other. Why? If you're a subscriber, then you know this. It is the year of fewer, better products, makeup, skincare, haircare, life, house, kitchen, clothing, all of it for me. And as a result, I am streamlining my collection, narrowing things down to the best of the bunch, the best for me of the bunch, the best for the earth of the bunch, and I'm taking you along for the ride. Winner of this little mascara battle is going to go against the next mascara and so on and so forth. It's kind of like a sports bracket thing for a tournament, Yay sports. So by the end of all this, I hope to get down to a couple, if not just one favorite mascara. And I'm also going towards plastic free. So let's get started. I feel like I sounded like Aziz Ansari on that one. There are a few differences between these two mascaras. I'm going to go down the scorecard, which is just five main questions that help me make up my mind. But let's talk about the first difference, price. The Inika Curvy Lash Mascara is $33. $33. See that little sticker? I put a little sticker on all of my products now just to let me know when they're gonna expire. These usually expire after three months. I know, it's a short amount of time, but anyway. And then the Air and Spaces Matcha Mascara, which I have in black, is $27.50. Neither is really a bargain basement price. So Air and Spaces is the less expensive of the two. The other difference that I can call out before diving into the scorecard is that the Inika Organic Formula is vegan. Both are cruelty free, but the website says this is vegan. So the first question on the scorecard is always about ingredients. How do the ingredients look? I am not a cosmetic chemist. I've just learned a few things after reviewing hundreds of products. So really there were no big differences between the ingredients on these two mascaras. Nothing major that I saw. You can certainly check out the full scorecard reviews for both. I have them listed out on those posts. So you can look at them because what doesn't pop out to me might pop out to you because you might have a sensitivity, that kind of thing. Next up, one of the key questions for a mascara when you're buying one, you wanna know if it adds volume, right? The Inika Mascara, the Curvy Lash Mascara, I've also tried their Full Lash, or I've tried a bunch of their different mascaras, but this is the one that I ended up really kind of grabbing the most. This is a softer type of mascara. It is a more wet formula, not super wet, but a little more wet, it builds very nicely, it fans the lashes out, there's a little bit more of a feathering effect happening here for volume, and it flips the lashes up a little bit. I did both of these without a lash curler, I just wanted to see what they could do without it. I don't always use a lash curler, that's just me, I know, no. Still, the Anika gave a little bit of a flip at the end, curvy lash mascara, kind of a good thing. I also noticed that because it was wetter, I could build a little bit easier, and I could really get into the root of the lashes. So I could tell that the lash line on the Anika option looked a little bit fuller because it deposited a bit more product. So think feathery, softer, volume. Erin's Faces Mascara also gives really nice pigment, which in turn gives really nice volume. This is more of a defining mascara, so it defines the lashes. Less of a feathering fanning effect. Building is a little bit tricky. Again, it's later stages for this formula, so I think that's part of it. it. Wasn't that it was clumpy, it just was a little bit tricky to work with and I started getting lashes sticking together. Overall, I still think that it gives a really nice amount of volume. Both are really nice in this area. They just provide a very different look. The next question in terms of mascara, you wanna know, does it lengthen? Why did I say it like that? I don't know. Plus, I really feel like they both lengthened. Was it lash extension lengthening? No, but they both showed a significant difference in the length of my lashes. I would say the Erin's faces maybe beat out Anika a little bit more there because of the way that it applies to the lash. They both lengthened really nicely. The Anika Organic gave a little bit more of a lift at the end. They both did a great job with lengthening. Again, just kind of a different finish. Okay, clumping, application. I kind of alluded to this with both of them. So I'll do a quick recap here. 
the Erin Space is formula a little bit thicker, a little bit denser, richer, goes on strong pigment. It doesn't build as well because it's a little bit thicker of a formula, certainly kind of a month or two in. Teeny tiny clumps, not major clumps, not like the Kosas. My God, that put on a ton of clumps after just a couple weeks of use. But the building, you don't want to overly build. I found that the lashes were sticking together. And then the Inika, like I said, wetter formula, a bit more feathery. Didn't see a lot of clumps here at all. I saw fewer clumps with this than I did with the Erin Spaces. Finally, the wear test. How do these each perform? So when I first did the Erin Spaces wear test, I saw no flaking. However, I think it's because I've had the formula for a little bit. I saw a lot more flaking this time around. Not like terrible flaking, but I did see flaking, which I was kind of surprised about. And then the Inika, I saw a little bit of flaking, but nothing crazy. I would say overall, the Inika Organic wore better. It was a very slight difference. Still, I thought it was kind of interesting that having the formula for longer, maybe, maybe the oxygen that got into the tube changed it a little bit. It kind of flaked a little bit. It felt a little drier. And now since I am on this crusade to fewer better. I don't know if crusade's the right word. Now, since I'm giving myself the challenge of fewer better, really trying to eliminate plastic from my life and looking at packaging and all the rest of it, I wanna compare the packaging on these two. Brings up a question, how do you recycle mascaras? I'm gonna do a different video on that because let me tell you, there's a lot of information and I just wanted an easy tip sheet, so I'm doing that and I'm sharing it with you so it's like a tip sheet slash video. I reached out to both brands and I asked, how do you recycle this? Erin's Faces is covered and coated with a powder. This is actually clear glass. This is not plastic. However, the cap and the wand are plastic and not recyclable. You can donate them to a wildlife refuge during February and October. Again, it's like, it's a lot. Then there's TerraCycle recycling options as well. Recycling is definitely not the best solution, but I just wanna let you know that that's what's up with this one. A little bit easier to recycle in my opinion. So Anika Organic said this is made from all BPA, I always wanna say BPE, BP, oh my God, that's the pizza that I used to get when I went to college in Boston. Boston Pizza Express, I wonder if it's still there. Probably not. Wow, tangent. This uses BPA-free recycled materials. They didn't tell me plastic, they said the word materials. That's the other complication here. There's a lot of new materials coming out to the market, but they said this is 100% recyclable. Now, I'm a little confused because everywhere else I've looked on the web says that these wands aren't recyclable. Yes, pause break. I just wanna show you the difference in wands. So this is the Aaron's Faces. It's more of a straight wand, soft bristles. And then you have the Anika Curvy Lash. This is sort of a half moon shaped wand with a little bit longer bristles that you have going on here. Rip nicely. Um, I actually really like the Curvy Lash wand. I would say out of the two, this is my favorite wand. Everyone is very personal about wands, but I digress. Is it fully recyclable? I don't know. What I do know is that there's plastic here, there's plastic here, but there's more plastic involved in the Inika Organic, which for me personally, my point in this journey is a ding on the score. So if I had to pick one of these two, then I would say I'm going with the Erin's Faces for the next battle. I'm not saying this is my go forward favorite, but it's again, like those little brackets. This is going to be the winner that goes into the next round and is tested against another mascara that I have to get down to that fewer, better for me, better for the planet option. Really it edged it out on the packaging and price. That is the end of this battle. It was brutal. It was tough. I'm just kidding. It really wasn't that bad, but that's how I feel about these two products. Have you tried them? What do you think about either of these mascaras? Or do you have a favorite that you'd like to share? I'm also very curious about the mascaras in glass bottles with reusable bamboo wands. That's something I'm looking into as well. Keep me posted on what your favorites are. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys right back here for another battle. It could be mascaras, could be concealers. Probably to battle something against something else that you've seen on the site. Throw in your suggestions. I'd love to know. I'm going to get to it anyway. Thanks again. I will see you right back here real soon. Until then. Wait, real fast. I really want to say something. So I talked a little bit about recycling there. Please know that I'm going to come out with a full how to recycle mascara video. That's gonna come up next. But I don't wanna just leave you hanging on what to do. I just didn't wanna squeeze too much into one video. So it's coming soon. Okay, now I'm gonna go. Bye. Stick around to find out. Woo! <coughs> the, wow. Wow, I almost just fell off my chair. <laughs> so excited, I almost fell off my chair.